Hello, this is Alan Chen from the Grids Lab. For this video, we're going to show you a quick demo of the latest updates on the Slotbot project, and as well its subproject, Project Subgropia. So the original Slothbot project, Slothbot first generation, was really singular and monolithic. There is only one Slothbot out there in the field whatsoever. So there's no scalability or expandability concern. For the second generation, we're really aiming to give it the scalability that it deserves. We're aiming to deploy tens, hundreds, if not thousands of softbots out there in the field. And we want a system to manage it, to manage this entire network, this cluster in an easy way. That's why we came up with this system or the sub project, Project Sacropia. It is a cloud-based orchestrator for the softbot project. So to begin with, we're going to show you a quick demo of what Project Sacropia is capable of with this little fake slot bot. The reason we we'll call it fake is because it uses a similar set of hardware, but the exact same set of software as the real slot bot. We're going to begin with this, uh, we begin with a very simple demo, and then we'll, walk, we'll, we'll bring you to the real deal. So Project Sacropia is a cloud-based platform. If you go to this website, sacropia.web.app, it should bring you to this interface. It is cloud-based, so you should be able to access it from anywhere around the world. In the homepage, this is a video for the original Slothbot project. The heart of Project Sacropia is really in the controller tab. If you click on that, it will prompt you to do this interface. You can see we have a few cards here. On the top left, we can select the agent robot that we're interested in, and we can also hit refresh if the agent is not up to date in our database. There's a robot command bank on the top left where we can just send direct commands to the robots in the field, no matter where they are. As long as they are connected to the internet, they will be able to execute them. On the bottom left, we have a robot status. We'll be able to see when is the last time this robot is online and trying to send us messages, and as well, what, what is its IP address if you want to SSH into it and do some software, manual software updates. We'll come back to that because usually we want the softbots to pull in software updates by themselves. On the top right, we have a sensor data section where if we choose a proper agent, a valid agent, we'll be able to select what kind of data we want to see, and we'll be able to display all the data with a time-based chart. On the bottom right, we have an instruction queue. We mentioned just a moment ago that we can send direct commands to the softbots. But the problem with softbots is that usually the softbots are sleeping. They're trying to conserve energy as much as they can so we cannot guarantee that they're, they're awake when we try to send them instructions. So what the instruction queue is, is basically it will store all the informa information or the instructions that we want to send to the sloth bots. And when the sloth bots wake up, they will pull all the instructions from this queue and start to execute them. And of course, there's going to be one independent instruction queue for each sloth bot. So you, are not, you, you won't be afraid of messing things up if you want to send a instruction just to one, but ended up sending to many, that won't happen. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's play around with it. So let's select the fake slot bot right here. I know that it is this agent that ends with 4A6E. Let's click on that. Because it's not hooked up to any of the sensors, the sensor data section is empty. We can click on blink to send it an instruction to make it uh, to make the green LED here blink twice. You can notice that there is also a, a yellow LED. And the yellow LED will, you, will only light up when the robot is trying to pull in the newest code, when it's trying to update its software. So let's click on blink. You can see the instructions are pumped into the instruction queue and then immediately got consumed by the sloth bot and then the LED blinked twice. This is because this fake slothbot is always awake because it's 
always connected to power and it doesn't know when to sleep. In the real world scenario, it will be in sleep first and then wake up and then start to execute the instructions in the queue. We can also try to update. You can see the yellow, up, uh, the yellow LED lighted up for a moment. That means that it tried to pull in the code, but then realized that, oh, I'm actually, I, ha I actually have the most up-to-date code. So it exited that status and came back to the usual life cycle. All right, that is for the fake slot bot. Let's just set it aside for now. For the second demo, we're bringing in a real slot box. It's not in its full, uh, full, full glory. It's still very bare bone. We don't have a mechanical shield for it just yet, but it will do for a little demo today. So you can see here we have a six volt battery, a solar charger circuit. This end will go to the solar panel, but for today's demo, we're not going to demo the charging capability. So we will just leave that unconnected. There's a push button to control the entire system. There's the slot spot main, main circuit board, and there's also the sensor unit. So the two LEDs that you, that you saw a moment ago on uh, the green and the yellow LED will also appear on the main circuit board of the real slot spot, except that all of the three LEDs are here and they're all yellow in color or orange in color. All right, let's just put it here so that you can view it and let's push the button to light it up. All right, just let it sit here. The real slot bot will take some time to boot up because uh, it uses a slightly less powerful processor than the fake slot bot that we're using to debug. But we should be able to see it come online in just a few seconds. At the same time, I can walk you through uh, what we're doing with the uh, the backend, how how we manage to store all the data with Secropia. So Secropia is backed by Google Firebase. It's a cloud uh, platform that allows us to quickly deploy apps uh, with databases, with cloud functions, and everything. So you can see something turning orange uh, once every few seconds. That is the fixed loss boss that we mentioned already earlier. You can, see, you can see it's updating its heartbeat every three seconds or four seconds ish. All right. We just saw this agent that ends with 7E17 changed its value a moment ago. That's that's how we know that the the real slot spot right here just came online. So let's go to that one. I think it's this one, right? All right, there we go. So the real slot spot not only has LEDs where it can blink, and also uh, updating uh, capabilities, but also it has it has the ability to move its components. For example, it will be able to move its motors, its motors down below right here. So we can give it a go, literally give it a go. I'm not sure if you can see it or hear it, but the motor here is actually turning. We can also make it stop. And it will stop. So that is just a peek into the entire Secropia, uh, Project Secropia, or we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg here. There's a lot of potential we can, we can, we can exploit from this project. Now that we have a stable fog-based access from anywhere capability for the Slothball projects, we can really allow it to do whatever we want. For example, we can apply control mechanisms to allow it to move to the most sunny area where it can charge the fastest. We can also allow, we can also make it go to somewhere that we think will have interesting data, and then we make it collect those data. 
So that is it for today's demo and uh, thank you for tuning in.